Yes, well, the, in Arizona, a state that's become infamous for its crackdown on undocumented immigrants and racial profiling of Latinos. Last week, the Department of Justice filed a federal lawsuit over the state's controversial anti-immigrant law that is scheduled to take effect at the end of this month. Uh, the, new, the new law requires police officers to stop and interrogate anyone they suspect is an undocumented immigrant. But in a sign that Arizona may not be alone, on Wednesday, nine other states, led by Michigan Attorney General Mike Cox, filed a legal brief supporting the Arizona law. The other states that joined, Mich uh, that joined are Michigan, uh, Alabama, Florida, Nebraska, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, South Dakota, Texas, and Virginia. So is Arizona a bellwether state on conservative policymaking around immigration? Well, a new article by Harper's Magazine Washington editor Ken Silverstein argues Arizona is becoming a laboratory not just for immigration policy, but a broad range of issues. It's a place, he writes, where the Tea Party is arguably the ruling party. Should the Republicans retake national power, quote, the country might start to resemble the right-wing desert that Arizona has become. The article is in the July issue of Harper's Magazine. It's called Tea Party in Sonora for the Future of GOP Governance. Look to Arizona. Ken Silverstein joins us now from Washington, D.C. Lay out the political landscape for us uh, in Arizona, Ken Silverstein, and why you're focusing there. Well, I looked at Arizona um, in a much broader way than, than, than merely the immigration issue, because immigration is, is sort of, uh, it illustrates what's going on in Arizona. But the, the problem there, the dysfunction, is, is far broader. I mean, you have the sort of radical right in control in Arizona. You've got every component of, of the sort of extreme right wing running around, whether it's the Minutemen you know, guarding the borders or uh, the anti-tax crowd, um, the uh, uh, religious conservatives, they're all very, very active and vibrant in, in Arizona. And I really looked at the, the economic situation there, because Arizona—I mean, everybody's focusing on immigration, but you've got this economic crisis there that is quite stunning resembling California in many ways, where the state is just completely bankrupt. Um, it has huge deficits, which they're addressing by cutting social spending in an extraordinary way, where, you know, they're doing away with all the kindergarten and they're kicking kids off of health care programs, taking very, very dramatic steps in order to control the budget deficit. And meanwhile, because as, as I, I, I wrote um, on our web, uh, on, on the Harper's um, site about Arizona as well, um, you know, it was described to me sort of as a Grover Norquist lab experiment run amok in a way. I mean, you've just got this anti-tax fanaticism in Arizona where it doesn't matter whether the state is doing well or doing poorly. The, the answer of the legislature is always, let's cut taxes. So 15 of the last 17 years, they've slashed taxes in Arizona, and you, so you've just got this expanding budget deficit. It all, you know, it, it's all this, this sort of Reagan era belief, uh, or even even pre-Reagan, but you know where this whole belief took hold um, during those years that you know you cut taxes and the economy will grow. Well, you can look at the record in Arizona, and there's no real indication that cutting taxes will always make the economy grow. I mean, there are situations where it may help, but it is not a cure-all. But that's the only thing the legislature there knows how to do. And so they have collectively managed to bankrupt the state and create a crisis that is going to drag on for years and years and years. And they've locked themselves really into a situation where they can't fix it because so many of the lawmakers, it's a pretty big Republican majority, um, so many of the Republicans have signed the, the Norquist anti-tax pledge so that they, under no circumstances will they raise taxes. So they're really locked into a box, and the state is in terrible, terrible shape, and the people of the state are paying the price. And, and Ken, uh, I was struck also in your article that you also focused on the impact of the uh, the uh, subprime, the, the housing crisis in Arizona, which is really like ground zero, 61 percent, I think you said, of the homes in Phoenix are underwater. They're worth less than the mortgages that that uh, that their ho their owners have on them. So, in essence, the wealth, uh, the collapse of wealth uh, that many uh, people in America have uh, have been faced with as the values of their homes have gone down has been especially felt uh, uh, in Arizona, hasn't it? 
Yeah, the, the, the housing crash in Arizona was just brutal. And I, I focused on it because it's, it's been key to what's happened to the state in terms of this recession. I mean, Arizona got by for years. People like to move to Arizona. The climate's nice. You have a big influx of senior citizens over the years. You've had all sorts of people escaping the cold in various parts of the country and flocking into Arizona. And so the state really has grown on the basis of growth, as people there put it to me. I mean, there hasn't really been — there's not a lot of industry. Um, you know, you, you, you don't really have much driving growth other than growth, <laughs> I mean, if that makes sense. You, you've had people coming in, and you've had this huge real estate market, and then all the affiliated industries, you know, so it's — you know, contractors have had a, a great time. You know, people who install pools are, you know, have done very well. I mean, anything related to housing, real estate and growth has boomed in Arizona. But it was a bit of a mirage because, this, you know, they, they kept cutting taxes um, so that their, the state was generating less revenue, but it was papered over by the fact that you still had people moving in. There, you know, even if they cut the sales tax, you had more people buying things. And so the state was, was getting by. But when the housing market crashed, Arizona you know, the state economy just completely tanked because you suddenly, you know, you had the the end of this sort of papered over growth economy. You, 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 you know, the sales taxes plunged. Um, they'd already slashed um, um, income taxes and incomes plunged as well. So you just had this, you know, cycle of, of spinning downward. And it really is amazing when you, you drive around some of the neighborhoods in, in Phoenix um, where, you know, every other house has got a for sale sign, and lots of houses are just empty. I mean, people walked away. I was, I, I was taken on a tour of Maricopa, which was this town that grew out of nowhere 40 years ago and boomed into a few hundred thousand people, I believe. I, actually, I think that's too high. I think there may have been 50,000 people at the maximum. Um, and, you know, you, you had nothing out there. This town just arose out of the desert. You had a few fast food joints and, you know, some shopping malls. But otherwise, there was no sense of community, no movie theaters, no libraries, no nothing. I mean, the town just sort of emerged out of nowhere. And when the real estate crash hit, lots of people just walked out. I mean, their homes suddenly, you know, you'd had this enormous real estate inflation. And so people had paid way more than, than the homes were worth. You had cheap credit, as you did elsewhere in the country. And when the crash hit, I mean, housing values, they fell in half. I mean, you just, you know, in a couple of years, your home's value had been cut in half. So lots of people just walked away. I mean, you see this in, in neighborhoods where they're sort of middle class neighborhoods and also in these McMansion neighborhoods where you've got, you know, just streets filled with these enormous mansions, swimming pools in the backyard. Everybody walked away. And so you've just you've got neighborhoods that have been decimated and that killed the state economy. And the the legislature has refused to deal with this situation. The only way to deal with it, you know, is, oh, we may have to raise taxes. It doesn't always work to cut taxes. But politically, they can't get away with it. And so, so, so can, they in, in, you know, in essence, stood then by I, and allowed the state to go under. So in essence, then, uh, uh, I guess part of the of the thesis of your article is that in in an effort to sort of uh, get away from the problems they're not dealing with, uh, the politicians have centered more on the social issue that they can rally the population behind uh, of immigration uh, while they are not handling the real problems that are, in essence, uh, uh, creating so much insecurity and sense of crisis in, in the population. Absolutely. I mean, you've got these various sideshows going on. You know, I mean, the, the, the legislature demanded that uh, President Obama produce his birth certificate if he runs for election again. You know, they, they granted an exemption in fishing license fees to Eagle Scouts. Wait, wait. You know, they, um, give they me, passed a bill. Yeah, Ken, the first one about President Obama having to present his birth certificate? Yes, yes, this is, you know, the, the, I, I, I think it was the entire legislature. I could be wrong. It may have just been the House that passed a bill demanding that the president show his birth certificate over, you know, over this crazy controversy about whether he was actually born in the United States. You know, you, you have a whole series of things. Going on. I mean, they passed a, 
a, a bills allowing professors to carry guns in, onto university campuses, which had previously been banned. You know, you, the, the state senator said that Jack Harper, I believe, was the sponsor of this bill, said that, you know, universities had become gun-free zones and that this was creating a climate, inducive, you know, conducive to terrorism, and that, you know, professors had to be armed in order to make the campuses safe. You can carry your gun into bars. They, they loosen the restrictions on carrying a loaded gun into bars. They've got, you know— Environmental I, I mean, legislation? They, they declared a constitutional right to hunt. I mean, there are a variety—you know, in addition to immigration, which is the big one that's gotten most attention, there have been all sorts of sort of cuckoo legislative initiatives that— have nothing to do with the state's economic crisis. It's just a way—I I mean, I'm, I don't even think it's diversion. 